from my heart and from my hand why don't people understand my intention good morning guys welcome back to the channel so i've got a couple of updates for you in this particular update regarding some of the cars in the collections and some changes in priorities uh, before i actually get on to some of the updates that we're doing for the spi mini behind me now uh you recall a few months ago we purchased a Mini for a thousand euros and the plan was actually to turn that into a full-blown rally car. Now we've been struggling a little bit with trying to source some of the specialist parts that are required for that so it's actually taking much longer than I originally planned. So the Britex Cooper project for the moment is very slow. Now another update that I've got is related to my son's uh, Cooper because if you recall, we use that car quite often as a benchmark when we race against others. And my son is using it as a daily driver. But unfortunately, over the weekend, he had a little incident and we've now found a crack in the floor, which means that instead of doing the Cooper after the Britex, we're actually going to change the priority round. We're going to work on my son's Cooper first and do a proper restoration on that one. And then we'll come back to the rally car at a later stage. Now, as far as the SPR model is behind me, there were a couple of updates that I really genuinely wanted to do when I first did the build, but never really found time. And given that my EV is now fully operational and actually being used, and the other two projects are only just getting started, I thought I'd turn my attention back to the SPI model. Now, um, you recall on uh, the late Classic Minis, that they had a very interesting way of stopping rust building up inside the wings because as we all know even if you wax oil underneath here it washes away over time and it tends to introduce rust again because you start to see rust around these seams down here and also on the bottom of the A pillar. Now in the very last generation of minis they used to have these, they used to have under fenders and mini sport in the UK I've reintroduced these so actually I want to fit under fenders on here that'll stop that buildup of water and dirt over time so we're going to do that update. Now one other update that were on later minis that I also kind of liked was that they had a way of helping the heater pipes inside the car not be kicked accidentally every time you had a passenger in the car so we've actually 3D printed some of those adjustments to change the heater box on the inside. So yeah, let's sort this small job out first and then we'll get on to the fenders and we'll go from there. So one of the first small modifications I wanted to do today was actually to do with the, uh, the air box or the heater box because uh, I'm sure many of you know if you're carrying passengers these often get kicked, crushed or they push dirt onto people's feet so it's not ideal. And the later minis they did come up with a rather nice solution because they came up with this which basically moves the air channel further back and out of the way of your passengers which I've always thought was a nicer solution now there's a different shape for a diff for different sides left and right as you can imagine but both achieve the same thing basically moves that bike so I need to cut this down so we can push this further back now I have been experimenting a little bit because these are 3D printed because we've been looking for the right thermal properties and as you can see I've got various versions that we've tried with different thermal properties to make sure that the heater box doesn't melt these as they're 3D printed. We even came up with a transparent one but in the end it was actually a vegetable based one that uh, seems to hold the best properties on doing this. So yeah, let's get this fitted in place and uh, cut this tube down and that should uh, work out quite nicely. There we go, both sides done. As you can see it cleans up the heater box quite nicely, moving those uh, pipes further back and out of the way. So hopefully that stops anyone from crushing or kicking them off. So yeah, on to the next job. 
Hi guys, I just want to stop the video there for a moment and let you know that any um, donations or ad revenue generated by this channel is actually being given towards cancer counselling charities that are helping families that have received a cancer diagnosis get through difficult times. So any help from your side, donations or just watch the video to the end uh, is highly appreciated. And uh, you know, from my side, thank you so much for the support so far. Uh, things are quite dusty to do with the cleanup. Uh, let me just uh, show you how these fit because you do have to get them up and over your suspension tower. So they are a little bit tricky. So let me uh, change cameras and I'll show you this. So basically what you've got to try and do is get the over fender to go over your shock tower here and keeping this pipe on the inside. For me, I've got some additional adjustments to do because I've got the LED light resistor on the outside and I do want the cooling to be working on that one. So I'm going to have to do a little bit of shaping around here. But basically it fills in all this well and protects the underside of the car. I'm going to have to remove the uh, outer fender lip first to get that done. So it has to be said, there's no easy way to do this because you have to kind of bend and maneuver this uh, plastic in place. So a little bit of brute force is required. I've got the additional problem that I need to get past the resistor as well. So uh, let's give this a go. Gonna make sure you're over the tower for the shock. And then basically it pushes in place and we've got some rivets to pinch it here and then we can put the fender back over the top but if I grab the other camera I should be able to give you an idea of how it closes off the inside of the arch really nicely. So I just realized when I was closing this off that once this is closed off underneath there's actually no way for me to put the uh, the capture nut on the back of the screw for the archers. So as you can see, I've switched to doing rib nuts, which is no bad thing. I probably would have done that at a later stage anyway, but that will now allow me to close off the panel and then put the uh, wheel arch over the top. Okay guys, hopefully you can see this because it's a really tricky angle, but you can see traps underneath the original OEM fenders, so it closes off quite nicely. And by the way, they are marked left and right to make it easier as well. So there you go, all nicely closed off. We can get the wheel back on. Okay guys, that's it for this episode. Um, I'm gonna work on the other side, which requires a little bit more trimming because obviously you've got uh, the radiator fan to deal with. Uh, now, as far as I've seen so far, these fenders fit on anything above a Mark III car. So uh, feel free to give it a try out. Uh, once we finish this job, then obviously we need to start taking apart the Cooper and getting it ready for its ground up restoration. So for the moment, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.